When they built it, it was $2 million, and it started in 1926. And so back then, that was a lot of money. It was built by Marcus Lowe's, who was part of the Lowe's theater chain. But some people might remember him. It was very popular. There was a man who, Oscar, who built dance houses in all around Akron. He wanted to build what he called a hypodrome. It was like an outside mall, like we might see today. They have bistros, they would have shopping, and they would have a theater associated with it. So his idea was to build this where the Civic is at right now, and it was to go three city blocks long. This was actually the start of something other than the Akron Civic Theater. He needed financial support to do this, so he started selling shares for $20 a piece. $20 was a lot of money back in 1918 when his idea originated. And he ended up not getting enough money and he went bankrupt. And the project just sat. So it was given the nickname, the gateway to nowhere. There were doors and it just didn't go anywhere because it stopped. And as legend has it, Mr. Lowe's was walking down Main Street and he asked his manager, he said, what is this that's all boarded up? And he said, I'm not really sure. Well, let's go down to the city building and let's find out. And he thought, well, maybe I can build one of my grand theaters there. And that's how it all started. The theater itself was built by John Everson, who is known as the father of the, art, of the atmospheric theater. Actually, the ideas came from his son. I said, wouldn't it be cool if you could sit down and look at the stars while you're watching something on the stage? So when you come in here and you sit and you're watching a show, when the lights go down, the stars twinkle and the clouds move. So he was the originator of that. I like to liken him to Walt Disney before his time. Everything was in his head. He had his own production company. Everything you see in the theater was built out of his imagination. And this particular grand theater was built to be a Moorish castle. So there's many different features here that you're not gonna see in your typical theaters, of course. The architecture is amazing. The detail is amazing. And we have the mighty Wurlitzer here, which in 1926 was $60,000. And it's just one of those things that you can't copy now. It was built to be a silent movie house. By the time they opened the doors to the theater, there were talking movies. He had to figure out a way to keep these theaters going. So that's when I say there, he was like Madonna. He kept reinventing himself from silent to talkie, but they did it. They transitioned very successfully, but that wasn't enough. So they started to bring vaudeville in, and they started to bring different entertainers in. Well, theater is always a struggle to keep open because either people want to be exposed to the arts or they don't. The $23 million renovation was a great feat. The community came together and saved the theater and refurbished it, and we're still not done. Renovation meaning that they took it back to the time when the doors opened in 1929. Everything's original. When you see the Grand Lobby and you look up at the Grand Staircase, those are really the original colors that they saw in 1929 when the doors opened. And they had to take it down so many paint layers to find that. So it was a very tedious process. We had a lot of companies working on it. And proudly, we can say that 90% of the working staff were from this area. So there's a lot of history here for people that one, built it in 1929, and in 2001 helped to renovate it. But everything you see is original, and it was sent out, refurbished, brought back to speed, so you're seeing history when you're walking around here, just like they saw in 1929. Right now, in the 2013-14 season, we had over 130 shows. We offer so many different types of programming. Um, we have dance, we have comedy, we have rock and roll, we have everything because we want to touch upon the community to help keep the doors open. So it's open almost every weekend. And then during the week we have private events, so it's always hopping around here. When you come in the Grand Lobby off of Main Street, when you look at the Grand Staircase, you'll see a line that goes from 
all the way to the right, across and to the left, and that's where the renovation stopped and where it starts. And hopefully, you'll understand when you come in here the beauty of it. So 23 million was just the start, and we're hoping to get it renovated for this generation to see.